I was not expecting this guys, wow. Hi guys, it's your boy Shinobi Sage, here with a review for Demon Slayer Season 3, Episode 3. Let's get it. Guys, this episode was amazing. It left me absolutely speechless, bro. I was not expecting us to get into, into the action that quickly, but here we are. Like, shit. At this point, I'm not complaining. The episode picks up from last week with Tanjiro and Kotetsu discovering the sword inside Yorichi's doll and Kotetsu suggesting that Tanjiro should use the steel from that sword to forge a new one for himself. And that's exactly what I was thinking because if he uses the sword, which is most likely Yorichi's sword, he might unlock some, some new different powers or something. And bro, we see Tanjiro's swordsmith here and that man looks like he came straight out of the hyperbolic time chamber. Like this guy is huge. And it turns out he's been training up in the mountains by himself to create a new sword for Tanjiro. So that somehow explains it. <laughs> he takes the rusty old sword and gives Tanjiro another sword to use. Later that night, Tanjiro and Genya are in the same room having a conversation and they seem to be getting along just fine. Tanjiro raises a question about Genyo losing a tooth back in the first episode and man and man I have no clue what's going on with that. I just assumed that the hot spring just healed his injuries or something but it could be something else. But fam we see both the upper moons 4 and 5 and that's when I knew shit was about to pop off. And rest in peace to this guy, he got fucked up. Tokuto appears before Tanjiro and Nezuko and he asks Tanjiro why he cares about others. And Tanjiro says that if you do good things before others, it will come back to you. And Tokuto looks so surprised to hear that. Like maybe he has something to do with his past because maybe he lost a loved one which made him the way he is. That's typically a common anime trope you see with his character type. So I won't be surprised if that's the case. And guys, Hantengu just pops into the room and fam, the way Tokuto activated his mist style looks so epic. Oh my god. He dodges his attack and Tanjiro and Nezuko go in to attack him and Tokuto chops off his head. Guys, this is the upper moon we're talking about and this guy starts growing a new body. And at first, I thought it was his ultimate form. This demon did a shadow clone jutsu and split himself into two. What's even more funny is that one of them actually looks like the Sage of Six Paths. <laughs> Tokuto gets blown away by the attack and what's interesting about this demon is that when he splits himself they're based off his personality so we saw anger, pleasure, joy and sadness in this episode and they all have like different abilities one of them can fly, one has a staff and one has a fan and the other has a spear and Genya got fucked up after shooting them and ended up getting stabbed and Tanjiro got carried away by one of them and gets blasted back into the forest and the crazy thing is he cut off its foot but it multiplied itself again <laughs> like that shit was kind of funny I'm not gonna lie Tokuto is running back to where the demons are but stops to save Kotetsu from a CGI fish. Guys, I have to say, this episode was fucking fantastic. I was not expecting us to get into the action so quick, boy. The animation, as usual, by Ufotable was excellent. Just to see the upper moon four's powers is just fucking ridiculous. Like, how did they kill such a demon? Because beheading him isn't gonna work. What's even crazy is that we haven't even seen what the upper fifth can do. You know what I'm saying? We saw the upper fifth in this episode, but we don't really know what his powers are. Even when I think about it, Akaza is technically stronger than the upper four because he's upper rank three. So, because we saw Akaza in the movie and we kind of got a glimpse of what he can do, but maybe we haven't seen his full power. So, yeah, man, like these upper moons are a problem. It kind of brings up another question I have about the Hushuras. When you compare the Hushuras to the upper moons, the upper moons are given ranks based on their strength, right? Upper rank 1, upper rank 2. But my question is, are the Hushiras given ranks based on their strength? Because from what I remember, I don't think the Hushiras are given any ranks. You know, because the Hushiras are based on their breathing style. They're not really based on rank like the upper moons are. We haven't seen Kanroji yet, so Kanroji is going to pop up soon somewhere. So we have two Hushiras and we've got two upper moons. So I wonder if the strength of the Hushiras is equivalent to that of the strength of the upper moons that's just the question we weren't really given an answer on who the strongest hushara is so maybe we'll probably learn that sooner or later this season of demon slayer so far is probably like my favorite season because there was so much mystery about 
Tanjiro's lineage and about the whole Yorichi situation and now we're getting straight into the action and mind you this is this is just episode 3 we're not even halfway through the season yet and we're already getting into the action it's just ridiculous I can't wait to see more of what this season offers if you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and until next week stay blessed